device which measures liquid or gas pressure is called pressure gauge. The one you see now is intended for measuring small pressure differences. Its operating part is a glass tube shaped like the Latin letter U, which is why this type of pressure gauge is called U-shaped. The tube is filled with liquid so that it should be at zero in both bends. Let's attach rubber bulbs to each end of the tube and squeeze the right bulb. The air pressure in it goes up and pushes the liquid out into the left bulb. Let's squeeze the left bulb. Now the pressure is higher in the left band. At the moment, the level of the liquid in the right band has risen to plus 10 cm, while the level of the liquid in the left band has fallen to minus 10 cm. The level difference is 20 cm. Let's calculate the pressure difference in the right and in the left bands. When the pressure levels P1 and P2 in the bulbs were equal, the water in both bands of the U-shaped tube was on the same level. If pressure P1 becomes higher than pressure P2, this surplus of pressure pushes part of the water from the right band into the left one. Thus, a difference in levels has emerged. Let's call it H. Now pressure P1 is balanced up by pressure P2 and additional hydrostatic pressure, which is created by the water column between the upper and the lower levels. So the difference between P1 and P2 equals the hydrostatic pressure which is created by the difference water column. We remember that a 10 meter water column creates one atmosphere pressure. So a 20 centimeter water column, which we have observed in our experiment, creates a 0.02 atmosphere pressure. Let us remove one bulb and leave the other one. Now atmospheric pressure is affecting the water surface in the left band and thus the difference in levels will show how much higher or lower the pressure inside the bulb is in comparison with the atmospheric one. The left side level has risen by 15 cm and the right side has fallen by 15 cm. So the level difference is 30 cm. Thus, the air pressure inside the bulb is higher than the atmospheric one by 30 cm of the water column. 10 meters of water column create a 1 atmosphere pressure and 10 cm will create a 0.01 atmosphere pressure. And 30 cm of water column will correspond to 0.03 atmosphere pressure. Let's make another experiment. We take a plastic bottle, screw on a lid with a hose inserted in it and put the other end of the hose into a plastic container. We spread a balloon rubber film over the neck of the container, leaving a small hole for the airflow. Let's fill the container with water, take off the peg and lower the container. What we get is a little fountain. The water level in the bottle is higher than that in the container. This level difference creates pressure difference at the ends of the hose. That is why the water floats down the hose. The container is filled with water. Let's cover it fully with the film. When we hold the container at the bottle's water level, the film remains flat. Let us lower the container. The rubber is swelling up because the water pressure inside the container has increased since now we have moved the container a whole meter lower than the water level in the bottle. And now we shall go up. The water level in the container is higher than the one in the bottle and the pressure inside has become lower than the atmospheric pressure, which is why the rubber sags into the container. The sagging of the rubber film shows how much higher or lower the water pressure in the container is as compared to the atmospheric one. If we use a tougher membrane and connect a sensitive index to it, we'll get a device for measuring blood pressure, a membrane manometer. You see this device on the screen now. It is intended for measuring blood pressure. We are pumping the air into the cuff 
with the help of the bulb, and the manometer's index is moving up the scale. Now we are releasing the air, and the index is coming back to its initial position. Let's see from the inside how this device works. The air gets out of the cuff and into a tin box, which is situated in the lower part of the case. Then this air pushes at the walls of the box from the inside, and the atmospheric pressure does so from the outside. When the pressure within the box becomes higher than the atmospheric one, its lid starts to bulge out. According to Gook's law, the greater the pressure difference, the greater the bulge. The lid's movement is conveyed to the driving gear through the draw rod, which then turns the index.